Well, my name is Jonathan Mark. Um, I live here and, um, <clears throat> and I get inspired by nature all the time. So uh, when I found out that the uh, Tennessee Gas Pipeline was proposing to put a pipeline not just through my land but through the state forests and the surrounding wetlands and the conservation lands, <clears throat> it, at first I was shocked. And then I realized there's a community that's aware of the fraudulent nature of this uh, project and now I feel like comforted by joining with people and hopeful that uh, we're starting to gather enough momentum early enough where we would be able to stop it. So uh, I'm happy to be here right now and in the future. So how were you approached by Kinder Morgan? Uh, well, they first called me and asked me if they wanted to do a survey. And I told them that um, I wasn't interested in surveys because I thought they were talking about the usual surveys for you know shopping stores and stuff. And he explained that they're a Tennessee gas pipeline company, and I told him I wasn't interested in infrastructure for fossil fuels, um, and that I'm much more into distributed energy and renewable energy that's clean. And then I thought I wasn't going to be bothered anymore. And then I discovered on the uh, no, frack in ga no Frack Gas and Mass website that they chose my land as part of their proposal for dissecting the prettiest part of Massachusetts all the way across the width and I realized you know, I had no choice but to um, you know fight it any way I can and, and I'm hoping that you know with unity and people realizing that everyone's paying for it and very few are benefiting from it will stop this uh, Pipeline. Tell us about your beautiful book and what they would do with it, about your book. Yeah, here. so here's Moss Brook and it's geared to go right across it, but they don't really go across, they go under. And they, they're digging about three feet under, they're bulldozing it, they'll be diverting it, and then the brook will be going over the, uh, the pipeline. And this is a pressurized pipeline. And wherever it does leak, and it's known to leak, it's going to infiltrate the water system. So not only do they, you know, get polluted when they're fracking and, and you know extracting it from the earth they're polluting in the transport and then they'll be polluting when they're burning it so it's the it's another century ago that this technology could be proposed it, it's not fitting for right now except for the geopolitical purposes that seems to be in play and, and that's what Massachusetts has to fight against. And you actually go in this brook sometimes it's much higher than it is oh, now. Oh yeah, well, I go in now even. even uh, just, you know, uh, whenever it's, you know, you get the hots and, and I, I live with very little, you know, need for electri a lot of electricity because I bathe in my brook as much as I can, especially I enjoy it and, and it's, uh, it's soothing to me. And it's a lot of tannic acid, it's really good for the bug bites. Sometimes I have to fight the bugs out here, but it's worth it because as soon as you get wet and coated, then they don't really bite you anymore. So you have to just, it makes you go in quicker. <laughs> and what are you doing over here with all these logs? And these are oak logs that have been inoculated with shiitake spawn, and that's for growing shiitake mushrooms. And in this area, it's a perfect area because it's nicely shaded and there's water for soaking the logs for the first incubation period they need to be soaked. And then every spring and fall, they start fruiting. Uh, shiitake mushrooms. And so if the pipeline went through here, it would just, this would be gone, I guess. This, well, well, it would be cut? Fifty feet, hundred feet yeah. of a swath, and yeah. I certainly wouldn't remain here. I couldn't, after being here pre-pipeline times, I would, and I wouldn't move anywhere else where I would trust um, this area. So, uh, Margie, we met on uh, one of the walks that was mm. going through the state here uh, to uh, get rid of the pipeline, stop the pipeline, and we got talking about things and uh, got the idea to make a video of uh, people's plight mm. facing the pipeline. So if you just want to give us your full name and where we are here in sure. the state of Massachusetts. Sure. My name is Margie Babbitt and I live in Northfield, Massachusetts. And I was contacted back in February when they wanted to survey my, I have a, another little piece of property in Irving that abuts the Northfield, and they wanted to go through there for the pipeline. So um, when they came, I, they wanted me to sign right there, and I didn't know anything about it. Wanted to do some research, and I asked them to please give me some time so that I can research, and then I'll get back to them. And um, it's been... I don't know, it was, a, it was a week and they wanted an answer, called back, and then, then I, I said I really haven't look, looked up enough, and then he called back again, and 
by this time there were buzzwords going around of who, who was being contacted and what this was all about and I was learning more and I wasn't liking it. So What did you learn that you didn't like most? Oh my gosh, that um, the whole forest would be disrupted and since this piece of land is surrounded by the, the state forest, just to even get to the piece they'd have to disturb the, the state forest and my property which is a forested property. So, um, and I heard about leaks in the pipe that could happen, and I could he I read about the dangers to the water supply, and um, it just would be detrimental to the environment and to me, and um, I didn't really want it at all. And if it was a question of getting more electricity here, I wasn't opposed to spending some money to put solar in or anything that, that would help. Um, help me but not to have the pipeline come through. Yeah. So how hard. many miles would it have been on your particular Irving piece? Oh, that's a five and a half acre piece. And when they're talking, which is very interesting, 50 feet yeah. for the easement, but then that's another 50 to 100 feet outside that easement. So when you look at that on a five and a half acre property, what's left? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what would they do to maintain it? After they dug it up, dynamited it, or whatever That's they it. have to do they to put to. it in, then they have that easement that you cannot do anything with. That's right. Can't do anything with it. So You couldn't put trees on it. You couldn't even have a... No. Yeah. Anything. No. It was very disturbing. And, and all the animals, I do have endangered species here. I have had a forester come out, and I have the spotted salamanders and the spotted box turtles. So I know that it would disrupt nature. I have vernal pools on that property. And, and what lives in the vernal pools? Oh, those, the salamanders. The salamanders, yeah. uh, -huh. yeah. uh -huh. um, And then I found out when you're in a forested area and then you're clearing that, it brings in the light. Well, when you're bringing in the light, you're also bringing in the invasive species. So the, bitter, the bittersweet and the buckthorn um, can easily come through. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I found yeah. that out too. So, I hadn't thought no about the issue of bringing in the light. Yeah. That's very interesting. So, it was yeah. really a no yeah. win situation. And then, um, then they'd have to maintain that. So, they would <laughs> do some aerial spraying of chemicals and things, and they wouldn't necessarily let you know what they were even spraying. No. no. So, that, that property would be. Yeah, I, I, trash. Yeah, and I, and yeah. I would be still paying taxes on it. And this is, you know, my property that, let's say, I want to sell it or, or um, well, actually, I want it to go to my daughter at some point. The value would go tremendously down. So well, that would be worthless, actually. Be worthless. It would be yeah. worthless, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it would affect it. So when you heard all of this, what was mm. your response? Oh, I was very upset about it. I, I just couldn't believe it. I was just shocked. I had no idea that they would want to go s through such pristine property and and just dissolve the whole eco eco um, environment yeah. that we have yeah. here. So um, after learning about it and learning other people that who they contacted, I said, "Okay, now what can I do?" Mm -hmm. And um, I had some great ideas. Of course, I wrote all the representatives. That was number one. And uh, somebody said, well, you could put a sign up. I said, right away I got a sign up. A homemade one, but I got one up. And then I thought, well, what else can I do? And they said, well, you could distribute signs. So that's when I had, actually I had two suppliers for signs. And as soon as I, I distributed a batch, I would get another batch. And um, as of now, I've distributed in 10 towns. Which How many signs do you think you've distributed? Oh my gosh, I don't know for sure. I, I, Maybe a hundred. I think at least a hundred. At least a hundred. At least a hundred. Wow. Because oh. they're all over. Mm -hmm. They're all over. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel really proud of that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then have you been to any meetings where they've made presentations? I've been to meetings, yes. I've been um, to the Kinder Morgan presentations. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes I have. Um, the best one I really liked was the one in Irving, mm -hmm. actually. I was there, yeah. Yes, you yeah, were. Yeah, you, yeah. you had a wonderful speech, and yeah, I really liked yeah. what Denise Andrews had to right, say. Right, that's right. Cause Representative, it was, state representative yes. Denise Andrews, that's right. Yeah. To have an opposition that's right. speaker to, to yeah. what they were presenting. Right. 
And so, um, so you heard Cole Morgan. No, not Cole Morgan. Kinder, Kinder Morgan. Morgan. Kin you heard Kinder mm. Morgan. Yeah. And then you heard Representative Denise Andrews and Hattie. And what, mm. what, what would, what did you take out of that? Those two sides. Oh, I was so happy there were two sides, <laughs> uh, because in then in the past there haven't been. And I'm going to another one on August 19th in my town in Northfield, That's right. and there's only one side. It's one-sided presentation. And we, we can't stand up and speak our questions in Northfield. We send in our questions right. to the town clerk, and then we have a moderator, That's right. I guess, who will select the questions. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a little different venue for, for each one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was very happy that Denise was there. So. What what most struck you from the Kingdom Morgan presentation? Slick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it just it just I don't know. I I didn't resonate with it. I didn't feel good about it. I there were people in the audience that knew facts and they were shouting out, No, that's not true or I mean not that I knew those facts, but there were people that knew in the opposition of mm -hmm. what they were speaking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so you never did sign to give them permission to sign. I never did. No, yeah. no, no. And then they, of course, sent another letter and said, "Well, we're going to the DPU if you don't sign." Oh, really? Oh, yes. It was huh. like a threatening letter, and oh, uh, wow. I said, "No," I said, "I'm sorry, I'm not signing this either." <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and then got a follow-up question, a uh, telephone conversation, and. I said, look at I, I sent that to you, registered mail. I said, you, you've got it now. You, you know how I feel and where I stand. So I haven't heard from them since then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you have neighbors and people around the community that are also being impacted by the pipeline that you know about? Yes, um, yeah, a couple of houses down, there, there is a fellow who, whose uh, land is going through and wants under the river. Well, it's, it's just right through a river. Just Which ridiculous. river? Mossbrook. Oh. So. Well, and, wow. the Connecticut. Oh, I know. That would be horrible. Horrible. Yeah. I mean. So they want to put it right under the Mossbrook River. This is, now wow. there is a fellow down there. Hopefully you get to interview him today. He, he knows more about that. Right. And he will tell you. He'll John, show John, you. John, yeah. Yeah, okay. he'll show yeah. you. Yeah. Exactly where. That's right. So, um. So you have ally. I mean, I see signs up and down the road here too. Oh, we all feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are all against it. Yeah, we I haven't really it. met anybody that was for it, really. Well, there was a fellow in uh, at that Irving meeting that stood up and hmm. and I, I think he was for it. Yeah. So. Um, but I don't know him, so I can't yeah. speak for him. So do you have like a lot of anxiety about this pipeline? I do have a lot of anxiety, yeah. yes, because yeah. you yeah. don't wonder, this is our future, this is the land, this is Mother Earth, I, I just don't agree with fracking anyway, mm -hmm. I mean all the chemicals being shot into the, the earth and, mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. all the pressure, and then having this high pressure gas come through, mm -hmm. and I've heard that these uh, pipelines out here in the country are not going to be as mm -hmm. robust, yeah, yeah, yeah. as the one yeah. in populated areas, now that scares me. So what if there's a leak out there and you can't smell it? You can't smell this methane right away. There'll just be um, a, a, an explosion. Mm. And I understand that the fire departments can't handle an explosion of that magnitude. No. They, they're not. No. Mm -hmm. They don't have the capabilities. So that scares me. And especially as you see where I live. Right. You know, I'm about seven miles, seven and a half from, you know, water. Mm -hmm. Fire departments, so mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. take a while, and then a little bit farther for the land. So, I was interested at that Irving meeting to hear how many people cared about the fracking issue. Mm -hmm. They really got the connection. Like Massachusetts doesn't allow fracking in our state, right? But they're allowing this frack gas that's devastating Pennsylvania. Yeah, devastating. People can't drink their water and all that pollution, and fire out of the faucet. Yeah. And they're allowing that frack gas to come through the state, even though we don't allow. We recognize the health and environmental damage of mm -hmm. fracking. So that, is, but I was interested how many people brought that up at that meeting. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of knowledgeable people here in Western Mass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there mm -hmm. are a lot of people that are going to get behind this and right. fight and fight. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what else have you been doing besides selling a hundred uh, Lord signs <laughs> and buttons and giving and away a lot too? Petitions <laughs> and yeah. Oh my gosh! I, I this is my summer vacation. I pretty much spent. <laughs> <laughs> But I loved it. We had a wonderful time with the walk. That was right. the other thing. And I right. was the sag wagon. Right. I carried the first aid kit. And you missed out because you left early. But right. I had cheese and crackers and uh, fruit. Yeah, yeah. And um, I know I had I had made two homemade cookies batches. And right. it was nice. we had a great smorgasbord up at um, South Mountain. Right. Halfway. Right. So um, and I enjoyed well, that. that was a hilly walk. <laughs> That was a hilly walk. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> but it was gorgeous. And how about those houses? And they would point across the road. Oh, well, that's yeah. where the creek is, and that's where they're going to be putting it. Yeah. People all up and down that road were devastated. I know it. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's very sad. Yeah. But shall we prevail and, uh, and stop it? <laughs> oh, stop the pipeline. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we shall. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We have to. I know there are a lot of good people that are working on our behalf. Well, 25 towns have passed referendums. I just heard that. 25 towns saying no pipeline yes. in this town. And I think yeah. Northfield will do I it, I think too. they will, too. Yeah. 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 And there are people definitely in Northfield that are very knowledgeable like you and very opposed and very activist. Mm -hmm. And so... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to imagine what they, what their equipment would be, mm. the steam shovels, they would be dynamiting places. What? <sighs> so the alternative is bringing democracy back to America through the towns and cities of Massachusetts. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> Could be a plan. Yeah. Right. Right. So let me just ask you if there's any last thing we haven't asked you about that you might want to say about how we're going to stop this pipeline, your involvement in it. Oh, well, whatever I can do to help, as I've said all along, and that's why I really I just dove right in. There was just no stopping. This was, you know, I feel really passionate about it and uh, wanted to do whatever I could do. And I, I really enjoyed it a lot. I found it rather magical to to find people that that have something to say and ha or something to contribute or 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 want to help. I mean, when the climate writers came, they right away they jumped in, give us some petitions. We'll stand at the farmers market and we'll we'll get signatures. So, not only are they, were they educating us about what they're about, but about the pipeline. And they found that out here in Western Mass, they were so happy to see signs all over, and that people really knew what was coming, and knew you know knew knew about it. But yeah. they were there to help. They yeah. were there to um, help us with our questions for for Kinder Morgan coming up August nineteenth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's um, it's been great. It's been a great experience for me. I'm I'm not really a political person, but. Uh, I felt, as I said, felt passionate about this. You know what I felt was really interesting and remarkable? This rolling march started at the border of, of Massachusetts and New York in Richmond. Mm. And every day it went to a different town mm. and people were there to receive it mm -hmm. and to take the baton mm -hmm. and to take the signs and to go the next day. It was like clockwork. I mean, I, I watched I it. It, ha it was like my sag wagon met up with Irv Irving and Warwick sag wagon. And I was able to okay. Here you go. Here's the, the leftover food. Here's this. Here's the first aid kit. Here's this, and then they took it. Yeah, loved it. Just it, loved it. It, it was very mm -hmm. positive. Yeah, very the, positive. The whole across the entire state. state. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I and then went to Boston yeah. for the rally. And yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. Okay. Yeah. I know. Yay. And you made the rally too, yeah. didn't you? I did. I know. Yep. Hi, I'm Walter Jaworski. And Walter, where are we now? We're in front of your home? Yes, uh, 87 Old Wendell Road in Northfield. Uh, and 
the property uh, is we have about oh 200 acres here and recently about a year and a half ago we sold the development rights off um, and it's under Forest Legacy program right now and I uh, we um, as a family we talked about uh, it's a big step to put the put all the land in conservation so that you can't develop it uh, anymore. And we felt that we wanted to leave it open and uh, be able to, to farm it and also to harvest <coughs> timber on it. And But we didn't want to have any development on it. And uh, when Kinder Morgan came to talk to us uh, in the spring, they, they said, uh, we want to put a pipeline through your land. And I said, well, I said, yeah, I don't think you can. And they said, oh, well, we just want to have a survey so that we can look at, uh, see whether or not we can do it or not. So initially I said, well, if you want to waste your time, go ahead. So I signed OK for the survey. Uh, and then I found out later that survey doesn't just mean uh, a surveyor. It means that they go, that they might go in and do core drilling and so forth with big machinery. And so I, once I found that out, I rescinded my permission to them and started to actively fight against it because then I found out that uh, just because it's under conservation and, um, has, has, and you're not supposed to develop it doesn't mean that they can't. I mean, I can't, but uh, they uh, could go to FERC, which is the Federal Energy something Regulatory Commission, Commission and get permission um, to then use eminent domain to take any land they want to. And uh, whether or not it is under conservation or not, or a park or, you know, um, wildlife reserve or anything, they can go and do anything they want to, for what I understand. So, um, Excuse me, how was your process of rescinding? How did that go? How difficult was that? Well, it was go? not difficult. It's just that uh, I uh, in, was in contact with the people who are against the pipeline, there's a whole bunch of people in this area, and they gave me uh, paperwork. Uh, I got a form to fill out to say, that says we rescind it in legalese, and so we sent it as a, I think, registered mail. To Kinder Morgan. Kinder Morgan got assigned a uh, postcard Recei saying, back yeah. receipt mm -hmm. saying that they received it. Yeah. So um, they never responded to that, but uh, they, um, but we have the receipt that they that they received the rescinding of the survey. They did come. Uh, survey crew did come about oh maybe six weeks ago. Excuse me, and and survey the roads around. You know, so they were here doing preliminary work. Uh huh. Uh, maybe about six weeks ago. And how much uh, into your land would this pipeline be, and how would that affect? Well, the the pipeline will cross over Old Wendell Road and then it will go through about a half a mile of my property. It's a long ways. And there's uh, there's streams, wetlands, ledge, forest, and um, things that I didn't want to have disturbed are going to be disturbed. One of the things also I found out is that I can't drive over the pipeline with my tractor and my equipment, if I want to mow the fields, I can't do it. Or I can't actually go from one side to the other without going onto the road and, and entering. So it's going to restrict me from uh, being able to do a lot with my land. Also for logging, I can't cross the pipeline for, uh, taking logs out. So I have to, I would have to make a different, if the logger would have to have a much more circuitous route of getting logs out. Yeah. Has to almost have two lots instead of taking out all as one. So it's going to impact, and possibly even will make it impossible for some of it to be logged. I'm not sure exactly where they're going to put it. So, so you have taken these legal actions to date, and you've met with other people who are opposed to the mm -hmm. pipeline. What's your next step? Well, uh, uh, we're we're fighting as best we can. Uh, we actually, I went with uh, some neighbors to see uh, uh, U.S. Senator Markey in Boston yesterday. Uh -huh. And we met with his aide 
and uh, he's uh, at this point has come out against the pipeline and uh, he's looking into how to in intervene with FERC and I think that's the step right there is to help uh, prevent the permission of uh, of getting of Kinder Morgan getting permission to do this or at least uh, this seems to be a real rush job in my opinion uh, there's not a very there's almost no input from the public or from other uh, interested parties and um, cost-benefit analyses all those kind of things have not been independently done Kinder Morgan has done them showing of course that it's necessary and vital that this be done but uh, independent uh, 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 what do you call it uh, study. study has not been performed by uh, by someone who's uh, neutral so uh, we asked uh, uh, Senator Markey to at least uh, slow it down and and get and let's get some studies let's get some information let's get a lot more input from the public at least do that and uh, he and I, I believe he's quite um, um, he wants to do that for us so at least that's what he said that's what his aide said that they were trying to so so we have Senator Markey, we have Senator Warren, who has also come out opposed to it. Mm -hmm. um, my congressman, um, Jim McGovern, is opposed yeah, to he's, it. He's ours, too, yeah. over here, and so, he's opposed to it. The congressman is. He's very opposed to yes. it. Yes. And uh, our state rep, um, 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 Paul Mark, is. Uh, uh, Stan Rosenberg is kind of wishy-washy. Uh, I think he's looking forward to his presidency of the Senate and wants to be um, kind of step back from controversies but uh, maybe you know with enough pressure I'm sure he's going to have to uh, make us make a stand one way or the other yeah. and so at least we've got uh, we've got our some uh, legislators and and our Congress people and, and senators against it and the more we get the better and we have a groundswell of citizens, and yes. here we are in the land of Daniel Shea, so right. uh, that should give us some Well, uh, I mean, this is addition. a very active, a politically active area. Yeah. It's a small population, but much, but a lot of activity, a lot of act, uh, activism goes on in the valley, much more so than, than per capita anywhere else, I think, in most of the country. And so, uh, so I think that's for... They didn't really realize how what they were gonna what they're gonna face once they got here because we're I think we're mounting quite a uh, campaign against them. How long have you uh, been on this land? I moved here full time in 1979. Uh, before that, it was owned by my uncle, and he bought it in the early 60s. Mm -hmm. So it's been in my family for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of equipment over here. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, what, what, what do you have going on here? I see well, I mean, the, wood, the wood's for my personal use. Yeah. I, I heat with wood. Uh, and uh, I, I have uh, beef cows. I have a herd of about 20 beef cattle. And so a lot of my equipment is to get ready for hay for, hay, for feeding them in the wintertime. So I uh, only have grass-fed cattle, which uh, is much more healthy for them and for uh, us who consume that meat, and a little plug for grass-fed, um, and uh, much more, uh, much less of an impact on the environment than uh, the uh, big feedlot beef that uh, most of us, most of the beef in the country is. Yeah. And anyway, so uh, I'm all on my equipment is to um, do that to to hay and get ready for for that kind of uh, for for the winter because of course they they can't graze in the winter time it's uh, there's no grass growing so we're going to go over and take a look at your solar panels but sure. um, what do you use that solar well it, it offset it's basically makes electricity for us for the farm uh -huh. and uh, and we're al we're allowed to actually uh, uh, give it or, or let another person have my daughter lives in Northfield and so she gets uh, the benefit of it as well because it's more than we use so uh, the, um, the amount of electricity that's produced is at least enough for two families. 
So you're, you're producing enough electricity for two families, and one of the things that Kinder Morgan is using as part of its PR is that it's going to provide electricity for us, and the simple panels you have provides enough for two family homes. Well, right, and, and, and uh, at this point, I think that uh, investing, I don't know how many billions of dollars they want us to pay for. I mean, that's the big kicker, is that uh, the Kinder Morgan isn't isn't going to pay out of their pocket to make to 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 actually build this pipeline. We are as ratepayers for electricity. We 100% of it's been going to be paid by us for their benefit, so they can take fracked gas, natural gas, which is has its own uh, issues, m lots mm -hmm. of issues about groundwater, about pollution it's a, it's also uh, it's a carbon it's it's you know it's a, a what do you call it it's a fossil fuel, a fossil fuel itself so we're uh, increasing the, their consumption of that and um, what I've read I don't know if it's true if they patch the leaks of the uh, pipes of the natural gas pipes in uh, in New England that it would more than offset what we what the what they're going to be giving us so, I mean, isn't that kind of, don't we want to fix it first? And then if we put solar panels on rooftops uh, and made it much more accessible for people, take $4 billion and, and subsidize that for the Commonwealth or other states and, and, and also um, other alternative energy sources to, to do. Um, how about uh, uh, supporting going into buttoning up and uh, weatherizing everybody's home. I mean, that would probably cut the gas usage or electricity and, and, and fossil fuel usage, I don't know by what, a third maybe? Just by doing that. So there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that can be harvested, so to speak, um, th that it hasn't been addressed. So they just want to go out and build this brand new um, pipeline, which then is going to if you're going to invest four or six or eight billion, who knows what it's going to finally cost? Because they say at first it said it was going to be two, and now I've heard it it's four. And this like the big dig in Boston, what did, what happened with that? I mean, all of a sudden it's like billions and billions more. So uh, if you start investing that kind of money, uh, then you're kind of tied in to continue for frack, to continue to get this gas from. Uh, places and doing things that are environmentally uh, deleterious to the groundwater of the localities where it's coming from and for global warming in general for the world. Yeah. So I, I, I feel that it's uh, we haven't really um, looked at those kind of things at all and it's as I said it's a rush job in my opinion and they are pushing through um, basically uh, a uh, pipeline for them to make billions of dollars, probably a lot of that, some of it's going to be for the use of New England homes and people, but I'd say a majority probably is going to be liquefied gas to go export so they can make even more money. And so that's like for, we're going to support them making billions of dollars and we're going to pay for the luxury of them, you know, for that, for their ability to, and their, and their stockholders and and their company to make millions, billions and billions, not billions, billions of dollars more. And I think that's just obscene. Thank you. So Walter, do you want to tell us about your, your yeah. paddles? You sure. We, How did we you buy them? How did you... Do you four, want to four years? No. Four years. And uh, they, uh, it's a nine, I believe a 9.2 kilowatt system, which is a fairly big one. A lot of people don't get them that big. But we went up to the maximum that you can do for a residential property and just for the investment and for um, so we could then give our power to our daughter too so that we could share and have uh, actually we make more than than she needs as well so we have built up some uh, some reserves of, of electricity that um, and that was another issue that they were the uh, electric companies wanted to take away that ability not that long ago, but that luckily was squashed. Do you want to just tell us how you did this briefly? Well, I mean, it, it was, we hired a company, uh, PV Squared out of Greenfield, 
to uh, we looked in we got a couple of bids from other places they were very similar it was, there wasn't a lot of difference in price when we were looking and uh, there's a lot of incentives in Massachusetts to, to get solar so that I think we're one of the better states if not the best state uh, that has subsidies for solar and so uh, I looked into it and uh, we uh, invested quite a bit of money to have those solar panels put on we get um, we get a rebate or not what they sell green energy credits and so we get every quarter we get some money from um, from that from companies that pollute by need, need to get offsets and so to so they can pollute so they buy my um, green energy credits somehow I, I I'm not really sure how that works that that well I just know that I get some money every three months from, from doing that so basically the payoff for this system is about seven or eight years so they will have paid for itself after that time so we're almost it's been four years to, uh, we've it was uh, July of four years ago that we put it in so it's a full full four years that we've had it and um, so another maybe three or four years it will be completely paid for the, of the investment that we put into it and then we probably will have at least 20 to 30 more years of electricity being produced from it I, I just uh, if, you know, uh, there there is arguments. Uh, people, I, I see people that there are some pro signs around every once in a while. You say I'm for the the power line or for the the, the pipeline, and uh, I think that it's mostly about jobs. I think people, I don't think that they necessarily want a pipeline, but they want the union jobs. And I think that there's a, there's ways. I believe if we talk about patching up the old infrastructure, doing all these other things that, of, that we could possibly help to improve uh, conservation, that uh, they could have that, those and more jobs. So if you're looking at jobs, I think that it's a short-sighted um, view of things, that yes, for two or three years, they'll get some good jobs, but then they'll disappear. Uh, and I think that there's ways of investing into alternatives into conservation and other low-hanging fruit um, of trying to button up houses, etc., that could actually uh, help the economy a lot more than that pipeline can.